Okay, so we're going to prove Ptolemy's theorem using complex numbers. This is a really beautiful application of complex numbers to prove a classical geometry result. So Ptolemy's theorem tells us that if we have a cyclic quadrilateral, so one whose vertices all lie on a circle, then the lengths of the sides of your quadrilateral and also the diagonals of your quadrilateral satisfy this nice equation here. And the converse is also true. So if you have a quadrilateral whose sides and diagonals satisfy this equation, then you know it's going to be a cyclic quadrilateral. So how are we going to get complex numbers involved to prove this? Well, we can think of these points A, B, C and D as corresponding to some points, complex numbers in the complex plane. So what we're actually trying to show, if we use lowercase for our complex numbers, you're trying to show that the distance from A to B, which you can write as modulus A minus B, times your distance from C to D, plus your distance from B to C, times your distance from A to D, we're trying to show that this is equal to the product of your distances along the diagonals, a minus c times b minus d. So this is what we want to show. And actually, we can immediately see that complex numbers are going to reveal some really interesting structure here, because if you imagine you've tried to expand all of this, but without the modulus sign. So let's just look at this. Imagine we're expanding the first expression, a minus b, c minus d, just as brackets, with multiplication without the modulus signs. It's perhaps not immediately obvious how closely related these two expressions are, but let's just expand this and see what happens. So you do AC minus BC minus AD plus BD from your first pair of brackets, and the second pair of brackets give us an AB minus AC minus BD plus CD. So you'll see here actually several of our terms cancel, so your AC cancels with the minus AC, and also our plus BD cancels our minus BD there. So all we're left with is, we write these in a slightly more sensible order now, you've got AB minus AD, then minus BC, and our ring term is a plus CD. And this is actually what you would get if you were to expand A minus C times B minus D. So this is really amazing. So without the modulus signs, this is actually always satisfied by any complex numbers just by expanding the brackets. So what we can use now is actually the triangle inequality to, we can't necessarily prove this immediately, but just as our starting point, we can say that the modulus of any two complex numbers added together, this has got to be less than or equal to the sum of their separate modulus. So this is the triangle inequality. We can apply this now because we know that the modulus of a minus c times b minus d, because a minus c, b minus d is just the same thing as the sum of these terms, this is going to be the modulus of a minus b, c minus d, plus b minus c times a minus d, then we can say that this is going to be less than or equal to the sum of the modulus of each term, so modulus a minus b times c minus d, plus modulus b minus c a minus d. We know that this is going to be greater than or equal to the modulus of this. And then we're getting something that almost looks like what we're proving. We can conclude then just by splitting up these products into the separate modulus of a minus c times the modulus of b minus d. We know then that this is less than or equal to the modulus of a minus b times the modulus of c minus d plus the modulus of b minus c times the modulus of a minus d. So this inequality, this is actually called Ptolemy's inequality, so this always holds for any four complex numbers A, B, C and D. We're going to use this as our starting point now to prove Ptolemy's theorem. We're interested in when do we have equality in Ptolemy's inequality here. And because this arose as a consequence of the triangle inequality, we could start by asking ourselves for complex numbers Z and W, when do we actually have equality in the triangle inequality? So just drawing a quick sketch of this, you can imagine you've got your origin, you've got your complex number z, and then your complex number z plus w, so w would perhaps be around here. Then the modulus of z plus w is going to be the length of the longest line in this triangle here. The side length here will be modulus of w, and this side length will be the modulus of z. So with the triangle inequality, we have equality here, if and only if this triangle essentially collapses in on itself and just forms a single straight line like this. So you'll have 0, z, and z plus w. So this is when we have equality in the triangle inequality. So how can we write this a bit more algebraically? Well, we can say that because z and z plus w lie on the same ray 
coming out from the origin, and W will also lie in this ray. So we can actually say that the argument of W and the argument of Z, imagine just this angle here, will be the same for each one. So we've got equality in the triangle inequality, if and only if the argument of Z is equal to the argument of W for any complex numbers. And we'll write this in a slightly different way that's going to be more useful for us. If you imagine they've got the same argument, then if you were to do Z divided by W, you would just subtract the argument of W from the argument of Z. So we can say that we've actually got equality if and only if the argument of Z divided by W is equal to zero. It turns out this is going to be our more useful form of this statement that we'll use later. So now we can say then that we've got equality in Ptolemy's inequality if and only if the argument of our Z term divided by our W term is equal to zero. So here, remember that our Z and W terms were A minus B times C minus D without the modulus signs. That was our Z term, and then our W term was B minus C and A minus D, again, without the modulus signs. So we've got equality in Ptolemy's inequality here, which is what we're interested in, if and only if the argument of this complex number is equal to zero. So where we're going to go from here then, is we're actually going to try and show that this angle at A here, plus this angle at C down here, is equal to 180 degrees or pi radians. So we're trying to show that these are supplementary angles. And it turns out this is actually going to be sufficient then to say that we have a cyclic quadrilateral, because by symmetry this would also say that these two angles at B and D both sum to 180 degrees. There's nothing special about our choice of A, B, C and D. So what we want to show, using the fact that the argument of this complex number is equal to zero, is we want to show that the angle DAB, or the angle A here, is equal to, sorry, plus the angle DCB, or the angle BCD going anti-clockwise, we want to show that the sum of these two is equal to pi. But we need to do a little bit more manipulation of this complex number before we can start to talk about the angle DAB and the angle BCD. So at the moment we've got equality in Ptolemy's inequality if and only if the argument of this complex number is equal to zero. And now all I'm going to do is slightly rearrange the terms in this fraction. So we'll write this, instead of having a minus b over a minus d, we'll actually write this as b minus a over d minus a. So I haven't really changed anything there, we've just multiplied both of these by minus 1. Then we'll do something similar with our c minus d and b minus c. We'll write this as d minus c over b minus c. So now something has changed. Our c minus d has become negative, we've left the b minus c alone. So we've actually got, this is all just the original complex number multiplied by minus 1. So if our original complex number had the argument 0, it's on the positive real line, then the negative of that is going to be on the negative real line. So the argument of the new complex number multiplied by minus 1 is just going to be equal to pi. So we'll do some similar manipulations now, because we've got the product of two complex numbers. And if you multiply two complex numbers together, you essentially just add their argument. So we can write this as the argument of b minus a over d minus a plus the argument of d minus c over b minus c. This is essentially just still equal to pi. The only issue is we usually define the argument function between pi and minus pi. So when you add together two large arguments you might get something that's actually larger than pi or smaller than minus pi. So we could be off by a factor of 2 pi. So I'll just write plus 2k pi here, so we could be some integer multiple of 2 pi out, but that's not really going to cause us any problems for what we're doing here. And we'll apply a similar trick. If you have one complex number and you divide it by another, you can write this as the difference between their arguments. So you have the argument of b minus a, when you divide this by d minus a, you essentially just subtract one argument from the other, and again, we could potentially be off by some factor of 2 pi. So we've got argument of d minus c minus the argument of b minus c from the denominator from that term. So this is all still going to be equal to pi plus, and then it could be a different value of k, but we've still got pi plus some integer multiple of 2 pi. And now we're ready to relate these arguments of complex numbers to angles in our quadrilateral. So the first claim here is actually going to be that the argument of b minus a minus the argument of d minus a is essentially just going to be the angle dab that we're interested in. So here we could potentially be off by some multiple of 2 pi. So we'll just draw a little picture to explain what's going on. 
So you imagine you've got your origin, your complex numbers a, b, and d. Let's start to think now about our complex numbers b minus a and d minus a. So it might help to think of these more like vectors than complex numbers. If you had a vector b minus a, where these are position vectors, then this would correspond to this journey going from a to b. The only difference here is that b minus a, the complex number, while it's got the same length and goes in the same direction, it's just going to be positioned somewhere more like here. And then going from a to d, this is our journey d minus a. This would have the same length and it would also go in the same direction. So the complex number d minus a really corresponds to this journey. Then you can start to see that the difference in these arguments, the angle between b minus a and d minus a, really is going to be the same angle as dab. So here with our arguments, we could, if we're unlucky, potentially get a negative answer, or we could be off by a multiple of 2 pi. So we're not going to go through all the details there, but there's a few more things to be filled in. So for example, we need to have our quadrilateral oriented a, b, c, d going around clockwise like this for this to work. But if you want to fill in the details, if you're interested, you'll be able to show that the argument of b minus a minus the argument of d minus a, this is always going to be equal to the angle dab, only plus potentially some multiple of 2 pi. And similarly, we can show that the argument of d minus c minus the argument of b minus c, this is going to be the same as the angle bcd, again, up to some multiple of 2 pi. So now we can replace these arguments by dab and bcd, and then we can just factor in these multiples of 2 pi into our error term that we've already got. So we can say we've got equality in Ptolemy's inequality if and only if angle DAB plus angle BCD is equal to pi plus some other multiple of 2 pi. But this is nice now because we're working with DAB and BCD. These are both just angles. We're not working with arguments anymore. So actually DAB and BCD as long as we have a convex quadrilateral, both of these angles are going to be less than 180 degrees, so less than pi radians each. So there's no way that we could actually get anything other than pi here as our final answer. So we can say then that we've got equality if and only if DAB plus BCD is equal to pi for 180 degrees. So this is saying then that the equation we're interested in for Ptolemy's theorem holds if and only if are pairs of opposite angles in our quadrilateral sum to 180 degrees, which is exactly what we're using now to define a cyclic quadrilateral. And because there's nothing special about our choice of A, B, C, and D, we could also show that the sum of these two angles is going to be 180 degrees, and we indeed have a cyclic quadrilateral if and only if this equation holds.